Hi, my name's Phil Burgess and today I'm in the town of Melkbostrand, which is uh, 30 minutes away from Cape Town. I'm here in South Africa to interview Andre Engelbrecht. Andre is a strength athlete who has overcome several challenges in life and gone through a multitude of sports and done very well. And today he's going to explain a little bit about his life and these challenges he's overcome. So without further ado, let's get started with the interview. Uh, enjoy. Hi Andre, how are you going? Yeah, very well, thanks Good to see you. Thanks for meeting me today. So just tell me in a minute a, a potted history of where you're from, uh, where you are now, and your sporting achievements today. All right, Phil. Um, I grew up in East London, yep. um, in South Africa, and um, I was always a small, a small little boy. Yep. Um, you growing, don't look it now, but anyway. <laughs> growing up, um, you know, I didn't develop very, very quickly. Yep. Uh, my ears did, <laughs> and um, but since a small age, yep. I think I was about four or five before I could even start walking. Yep. Um, my parents sent me to judo classes, so I started okay. doing judo. So that is um, one of the first sports I got into. Then, um, you know, my, my family, my mom and my father, they were very sporty. And when it came to things like playing rugby and cricket and soccer, whatever the school had, yeah. I played it. Yeah. So from a young age, rugby, cricket, um, I was into sports. That that's what I that's what I did. But my main focus was was always been judo. Okay. And um, started competing in competitions when yeah. I was six six seven years old um, and then from there on you know, I started getting into rugby and I say cricket so why did you get into judo so what was what's well, going on with that? I, I didn't really have a choice you know my my parents sent me they they, they wanted me to to teach me an art that um, teaches you discipline yeah and judo is is called the gentle way yeah. it, it teaches you to protect yourself but it teaches you not to use your art to bully or yeah. Your, or, or to fight someone else, you know, it's just to, to defend yeah. yourself. And um, so yeah, you know, I got into judo, and then that also helped me later on when I played rugby. Yeah. Because in you know, judo, they teach you small little tricks, so how to get the guy's hands off the ball. <laughs> and but very useful in the yeah, very, very, yeah. very useful, especially when I was hooker in high school. Uh, I was going to say what position yeah, you yeah, that, 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 that might be the one. Yeah. But um, as I said, in, in primary school, I was I was always very small, and um, so I played. Um, scrum off or fullback, you yeah. know. In cricket, I, I was never top level player. You know, I was always there for the for the fun of it. Yeah. And um, growing up, going into high school, I was also because of my judo. I never really um, gained weight. You know, I never really. Um, you know, we look at the other guys when they go from standard five to standard six. Yeah. You know, they will gain weight because they want to play cricket and yes. rugby. Yeah. Now in judo, it's all about weight categories, yeah. and I fought in the lighter category, so I always stayed 50 kilos, 54 kilos. Now you can imagine going to high school, you know, um, being smaller. Then you want to go play rugby against mm -hmm. the guys who want to yeah. play rugby. You know, the guys who want to play cricket, and um, I played hockey and I swam. Um, I did long distance running because unfortunately my legs were far too small <laughs> or too short to, um, for the 100s and 200s. Okay. And um, so yeah, I know my, my judo developed. Um, eventually I got my Springbok colors for judo. So you um, represented South Africa? Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Um, I was very fortunate. You know, I was um, national champion and Natal champion. And Brilliant. It was, it was, I grew up in, in Natal uh, for most of my life yeah. in, in Durban, after East London. Okay. And, uh, yeah, rugby, I played for first team eventually, yep. um, but I'll, I'll get to that. Then cricket as well, you know, cricket, uh, I played for, for my school's first team. I played hockey yep. for, my, for my school as well. I swam, um, but as far as it, it goes, you know, I, I didn't represent South Africa in any of the other sports. You know, yep. judo was my main focus. Okay, yeah. um, up until about standard eight, I would say I was about 16 years old. Yep. Then my focus started to shift. Um, you know, certain things led to that point where I've decided that just being able to fight or no an art isn't good enough anymore for me. I, I, I need to get stronger. Okay. I mean, being in standard nine, beginning of standard nine, I remember I was still 64 kilos. Mm. And, um, you know, good. I was fast, I was fit, I was yeah. athletic, but I wasn't very strong. Yeah. And, uh, but yeah, I'm mean, getting to achievements, um, all sports, you know, mm. I, as I said, I represented South Africa for, for the judo. Yeah. It's one of my highlights. Um, after school, I got into bodybuilding. Yeah. 
uh, I needed to decide what do I want to do, you know. Okay. And um, you tried a few. I, I tried a few. You know, I wanted to be strongman. Yeah. I wanted to do powerlifting, but the people I got in contact with, you know, they, they weren't very forthcoming. They didn't want to help me back then. I'm talking about '94. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, '95, '96. Yeah. You know, and then in '97, I met uh, a guy called Mario from Bayonne. Okay. Um, and I went to go see him, and you know, he was fantastic and inspiring, and telling me, "Yeah, you want to become bodybuilder and this." And then I started um, looking into Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know, and Lou Ferrigno, and <laughs> seeing these big guys and the weights they're doing. And then, um, so yes, I decided I'm going to do bodybuilding. Yeah. I'm going to be a bodybuilder. So bodybuilding as well. It took me a few years to get into bodybuilding. Eventually, in my novice year. Um, I won all my novice competitions yes. that year. I uh, this was 2009. Okay. No, it's actually yeah. quite, quite, quite a um, time up uh, from 1999 that I started. Yeah. Wow. But I mean, yeah. how old are you now? I'm um, 37. 37. Yeah. But I mean, in between there, I joined the the navy. Yeah. Now I'm a navy diver. Yeah. So I, it is difficult to do a diving course and to build a career and be a bodybuilder. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it, it's nearly impossible. <laughs> yeah, you've got to be very, very disciplined in two different things. And very disciplined. So with yeah. the bodybuilding, um, that year, um, in 2009, I won all my novice shows. I won the novice um, nationals. Yeah. And the overall title. Yeah. And then I thought, this is it. You know, bodybuilding, professional, I'm going to be yeah. this because yeah. it's... Yeah. But then unfortunately, um, due to certain events and um, you know, s certain things happened and it, I just didn't want to do bodybuilding yeah. anymore. You know, I, it, it's, it is difficult to explain but I was supposed to progress mm. and then I spoke to a few people and because I didn't have a sponsor yeah. at that time, I was paying for myself, they basically told me, well listen, yeah, you know, from now on, it's all about sponsors. And yes, if you want yeah. to come first and second, you're competing against names. Mm. So you can carry on now, but you need to secure money. You need to secure a sponsor. Yeah. Um, and and that, just, that just put me off completely. Yeah. Okay. And um, then I said, no. Okay, well, if there's no avenue here, right? If, if I'm the best, I'm supposed to win. Mm. But if it's not going to be like this, I want a sport where there's clear cut. There's no blurred lines. So. I started looking at powerlifting yep. and strongman. I said, yep. okay, now this is 2014. Mm. I said, why not? Let's go for it. You know, from a bodybuilder yep. to a to strongman. Yep. So that year I jumped in, I did my first strongman competition, then <laughs> I just picked up yep. at this thing, um, competed, came second, yep. uh, qualified for nationals, okay, yep. went to nationals, came third in my first national. That's pretty good going. Yeah. So in the under 105 kilo yeah. category, um, then I just started doing powerlifting as well the same year. Yeah. Competed in my first competition, did very well. Um, I won my category, yes. I think under 100 kilos. Uh, the next year I got my 300 kilo squat, which was that's fantastic for yeah, me, that's, you know, that's in competition. Good, yeah. And then I also thought, this is it, you know, there it goes. I'm gonna be hitting those big numbers soon. Yeah. Unfortunately, due to injuries and hernias and back aches and torn quads and mm -hmm. broken knees and broken shoulders. So, <laughs> in a nutshell, that, that's just some of the achievements. Yeah, wow, that's, that's, that's awesome. <laughs> now, you had a pretty bad spinal injury. Do you want to just tell us a bit more about that? Um, yeah, in, in, I think it was 2017, beginning of 2017, um, I was training really hard. Yeah. After my 300 kilo squat, I realized that I have the, the ability to really go heavy, you yeah. know, and I enjoyed it. Yeah. So I was really pushing myself and I was um, busy with the squatting session and um, I was getting ready for nationals okay, yeah. um, that year and it was in January, I think. And then I was going heavy, you know, I was pushing the 300 kilo for reps and, and I thought, listen, yeah, I can do this. Yeah. I can now, today's the day I'm gonna not go 310, I'm gonna go 320 yeah. and I'm gonna awesome. break yeah. it. So I added the weights on the bar, I racked the bar, and um, I don't know, I was just in two minds about should I go down and I think that was the problem, it was that, that doubt. Yeah. And then... Um, I think many people have been there before, they didn't feel right, they've done it, whether it's and deadlift, squat... Exactly, and, and then, then half-heartedly yeah. I went into it, I slipped, I just felt this, this pain in my back, you know, this, 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 this pain, and so I put the bar back, and you would think that is it. You would think now, wow, okay, yeah. that's the injury, but no, it's not. Yeah. So I went home, 
and I and it, something wasn't right. Yeah. I, you know, people that that had herniated disc before will tell you, no, it, it's not fun. No. But I, I grew it in my teeth. I said, no, so now I'm, this is nothing. It's just a small. So the next day I went bench pressing. Ooh. So same thing. Okay, yeah, I'm hitting the bench press, and um, my best competition bench was 185. Yep. Wow. And uh, I said, no, I'm hitting 200 today. Yep. Okay, I was at Steenberg Gym, <laughs> so I got the 200 on the bar. And now I'm alone. I don't yeah. ever spot the nothing. So, Ooh. so Ooh. I, I don't feel the pain already. So, yeah. what I do, I arch my back. Yeah. I arch it. I take the weight off. As I go down, I just felt this this sensation mm. in in my back, this burning sensation, and I and I just felt nothing. Yeah. From my legs, it just numb. There is nothing. Now I've got this weight, so it just drops. Yeah. Drops, and I'm laying there. Now I'm, I'm thinking to myself, okay, what now? Yeah. I don't want to scream for help. But I can't feel anything from my, wow. my navel yeah. down. Yeah. And I'm laying on this bench. So my, my wife at the time was also in the gym. She was swimming yeah. at the pool downstairs in the Virgin Active. <laughs> so I crawled down, <laughs> threw myself off the bench, yeah. and I like leopard crawled to the, to the railing. And I shouted for her in the pool to come help me. Oh dear. And then she came running up. And by that time, people saw something was going yeah. Because this is a man leopard crawling on the floor, yeah. shouting for help. Not normally what I've seen in the gym. <laughs> so, long story short, they stabilized me, got to the hospital, and then they said, well, yeah, um, I actually got such a bad spasm that it pulled my spine back the other way. Mm. And then the, the disc herniated. So, it herniated on the outside, but as the doctor explained yeah. to me, I've got splinters that herniated into my, into yeah, my wow. spine. Mm. And so they actually had to had to pull. I don't know what they did. They had to. I mean, for the next week or two, I could remember nothing. Yeah. I had been such pain medication and drugs yeah, that. Well believe, that. Yeah. And then, then when I spoke to the specialist, um, the neurosurgeon came to me and he says, "Listen, yeah, you had a, you herniated some discs in the back. Okay, they tore and whatever. But he says the main concern is that you've got spikes, or whatever they want to call it, that actually herniated into your spine." And that is sitting by the nerves, That's not great. and it's right behind your belly button. Yep. So he says one more strike, you got one more strike left. He says that they pulled it back and they did what they could. But if I do this again, if I it on that spot and it actually hits into my spine, I'll be paralyzed from my navel down. Yeah. Wow. So obviously that that was you know when he told me that I had this this like cold feeling um, in my body, thinking this is it. You know, I've this is it. Out of all my injuries, I mean, yeah. as I was. I told you before, I mean, I've torn calves, I've broken my knee, yeah. I've had shoulder surgeries, torn my pec, yeah. um, you know, my forearm, I had my bicep torn off, replaced. But, you know, when a doctor tells you, listen here, this is it, mm. you know, and this is supposed to be the best surgeon, yeah. this is this is it now, you you are over. Yeah. You, you tend to... <sighs> I, I, I have heard it said that when you get a major injury, when you're an athlete, you go through the same steps as in the bereavement process? Yes, no, definitely. you. Yeah. You know, I, I remember getting in the car and and I just wanted to cry. Mm. You know, I just I, I just thought to myself, what now? Yeah. Really, I have my whole life I've either been fighting, I've been training, I've been competing. Yeah. This is who I am. I'm a yeah. sportsman. Yeah. Now you tell me, listen here, yeah, you cannot you are on your last legs. One more strike and that's it. You yeah. will not walk anymore. Yeah. So then you know, I, I remember sitting there and and then my wife actually, yo, you know, she saw that that I, I was on the edge. I just, I just had enough. I just, you know, everyone telling me no, it's done. You know, the specialist coming, no, you're over. You cannot. I just got to the point where I just couldn't. I just couldn't motivate myself. And then my wife actually had a stern talking to me, and she actually reminded me. She told me, you know, you've been through so much. Yeah. You have overcome so much. I mean, in. Now why? Now you want to listen to them? Yeah. Really? Now you want to? Why now? What is different? Yeah, that's right. And and from then it's just I mean, I've just recently now deadlifted 340 kilos yeah. at my last time in college. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, I've squatted 300 kilos again. Yeah. I mean my bench is up to very close to 200. So, so what changed it, that your mindset? My mindset. Yeah. You know, I realized that these doctors are you know they don't know me. Yeah. They don't know sportsmen. Yeah. Um, they don't know what we go through. They don't know that we have the capability to switch our bodies. 
you know, the, the strength to say, no, I'm not going to accept this. It, it, it's not how we work. It's not how we do things. Mm -hmm. If you look at some of the strongest men on earth, how did they get there? Yeah. You know, you look at, um, I read the story of Eddie Hall. Yes. Yeah. And he says that he had to dedicate himself to be the best in the world. He had to dedicate himself, give up everything. Yeah. Absolutely everything. And, and the things he did, um, he knew that it, it would bring him so close to death, but yet he was willing to do it. Mm -hmm. That's a sportsman. Yeah. If you want to excel, if you want to be the best, there must be no, this is the end line. Mm -hmm. There must be no, oh, I can only go there. Right, there must only be darkness. Yeah. And you must be willing to go into the darkness. If you don't want to go in there, you'll get nowhere. Because the guy next to you will go in there. And then he'll just light it up some more. Yes. And light it up some yeah. more. And eventually, you'll be on the other side while you're still this side. Mm -hmm. So that just switched for me. And now I'm back here again. I'm ready, you know, amped to go. Um, it's... <laughs> But, but it's been a it, it's been a such a, a mental thing because even though my mind says you can I still have this in the back of my head I've got this 300 kilo squat on the bar now mm. you know when I did that 340 deadlift um, even though I was so amped and I was like I, in the back of my mind it was like is this my last deadlift yeah. is this it yeah. you know just go out just do it just lift it put it down then fall over yeah. you know?